I've just mentioned a couple of the studies out there that looked about at chemicals getting out. Uh, the one from Rutgers, I believe, is unpublished but interesting. Took samples from New York City parks and used um, leaching solutions to see what they could get out and certainly found that they could get out a whole bunch of polyaromatic hydrocarbons um, using solvents and nitric acid solutions to see what vaporized and leached out of it. Uh, the Environmental Human Health Institute in Connecticut did some work also. They looked at what came off in the air, volatilized, and also found at um, pretty high temperatures, this, at 60 degrees Celsius, that these compounds came off in the air. And they also did leaching, but they did leaching actually with just water, and also found even with just distilled water that some of this stuff comes out. Um, there are questions about the conditions that are used in these tests and whether that is what it's really like out there in the real world, and I don't actually know enough to answer that. Um, and not a lot of testing has been done, but it certainly raises some concerns. I mentioned uh, the issue of acute exposure and irritation and uh, respiratory irritation, mucous membrane irritation, but the sort of more significant is some of these are cancer-causing compounds and this chronic long-term exposure in kids who have those unique vulnerabilities put them at greater risk of cancer. A big question mark, but certainly an important one. The heat and dehydration and burns I'll touch on. Um, one of the interesting ones uh, that I think is this issue of infection, and there's a couple of really nice published studies that implicate uh, synthetic turf and turf burns and increased risk of MRSA infection, this resistant staph. Uh, one is an MMWR, which is the CDC's, pub CDC's publication from 2003 that looked at um, uh, in football players, I think this was uh, uh, high school or college, I cannot remember, um, that showed one of the risk factors was turf burns from modern synthetic turf for uh, this cluster investigation of MRSA infections. And the other one was another CDC investigation. This one was the Los Angeles Rams, who have a synthetic field. And um, again, for the, they had an outbreak cluster of MRSA infections, and one of the risk factors, again, was turf burns. And that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine just about uh, two years ago. In terms of injuries, just to briefly mention, it's not clear that there's more or less. They're just different. Of the different injuries that you see on synthetic fields and grass fields, there are more of these abrasions and uh, sort of turf burns. Otherwise, it's debatable what's more or less important. The pattern does appear to be different. It's not equivalent, and I don't know enough about sports medicine to know which is better or worse, but it's clearly not the same. And then the heat. So a couple of people have done this, one at Brigham Young and the other one at the University of Missouri have done a whole bunch of measurements of heat, but clearly the temperature on a hot day, this was like a 98 degree day, on the surface of the turf it was 173 degrees. And the reason they did this actually was, um, or maybe it was BYU, I'm sorry. At BYU, they did it because when they installed the field, one of the trainers actually got a burn through their shoes, blistering burn. And they went back out and did average temperatures on one day, um, a pretty high. And they found that, of course, the average and the high on artificial turf was dramatically higher than on regular uh, grass. So that poses an issue. It depends on shading, time of day, temperature, northern climate, southern climate. But clearly, there's questions. And then I won't spend much time, but um, there's this whole idea of the, the heat island effect. It's not clear that enough ground is covered with this to really heat up the city more, but certainly urban areas are always hotter because they have more dark asphalt and stuff like this than green space. Um, and I'll just, I'm going to skip over that from the interest of time. And then there's cost. This came from New Yorkers for Parks who got it from the Parks Department in New York City. This was one cost comparison that showed that it was about $14,000 a year less over about a 10-year period to have a synthetic field. There is some debate about, you know, you'll see things like mowing and it doesn't cost anything because you don't do it on synthetic turf. But there are some debates about these costs and what, whether they're totally all-encompassing. There is work you have to do on synthetic fields. You have to rake them and vacuum them. Sometimes you have to add more fill all the time. You have to repair rips and tears. Someday you're going to have to get rid of that stuff and that's going to be a cost. And if there is environmental contamination runoff, you may have to pay to clean it up. And those are never considered when this goes on. And then there's the issue of what kind of a field. So soccer multi-use fields get heavy use, but baseball fields, for instance, most of the use is on the base paths. And the infield and outfield actually don't get that much. And perhaps you don't actually need such a durable surface. And there are alternatives. In the last decade, not only has uh, synthetic turf advanced, but so have natural grass designs. Um, there's a whole bunch of companies that do those sort of installations. And in fact, there's dozens of varieties of grass that have a variety of different properties that improve you have to select the right kind. Some are better in different climates. They have um, more blades per square inch that make them more durable. Um, new installations include good drainage, which make a huge difference in terms of the durability and availability of the field. Um, so there's lots of issues that go into choosing a grass field and installation that may not have been all considered. Um, 
they talk about shoot density, increased strength of recovery, so less time you have to close the fields. It's not going to be like synthetic turf 24-7, but it's probably not like what we're used to, which is just grass on dirt without drainage. So there are probably more choices than just asphalt, dirt, and synthetic fields. And this is just an example of that kind of insulation. This is the Great Lawn. You all remember the huge renovation, but similar to what you saw with synthetic turfs, it has this nice spongy layer underneath, good drainage with this pea stone, and then a, you know, a special layer that keeps it intact. And you all know the Great Lawn is great. And there are baseball fields on the Great Lawn, right, around the edge of it. So now that's not cheap. Uh, on the other hand, you don't have to reinstall that every 10 15, 20 years, um, you have to maintain the top part. So the costs do uh, get amortized over time, just like synthetic field installations do. So I think this is a difficult choice. And, and as consumers and members of our community, we have to think about these issues. But certainly, uh, there is a compelling need for access to sports fields. I would not deny that. But I think that the advantages and disadvantages of synthetic fields and grass fields have not really been fully studied. And a lot of this stuff is happening right now. And we should think carefully about that. Um, and natural turf systems have advanced a lot also, and I'm not entirely sure they're getting their sort of uh, due time in consideration. And then finally, I think you have to think about what kind of fields you're replacing and what you're going from and to um, in terms of going from, say, asphalt, or is it a high multi-use field in a very dense area that's really going to be used 24-7 or not. And then finally, given the current situation where there's actually dozens installed already in our communities, and right here, what can you do now as... Uh, parents of kids out there. So one is, I think on very hot days you should be careful, particularly with little kids, uh, in terms of burns. Uh, and I think that's a real issue. The other is that um, if they do get turf burns, you should clean them with soap and water. Uh, and if you're in an athletic situation, going into hot tubs and sharing towels and massage stuff after that is part of the risk factor for getting infections like MRSA. Um, you should try not to get the stuff into your home. I, I'm not sure how practical an advice that is, given how this stuff sticks to socks, but you know, if you can keep it out or have them uh, take their clothes off outside the house or in the garage and shake them out and throw the stuff out, it's better than having your whole house contaminated. Um, and then finally, I think showering and washing always makes sense when kids come home after a day playing on those fields, um, if that's what you're doing.